Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Arlene Westerhoff and welcome to this broadcast of Prophetic Perspectives. And today my guest is Robert Henderson and we're thrilled to have him. Robert is an author, he is an international speaker. Robert is an apostolic leader, not just to his nation of the United States, but also to the nations of the world. And Robert is one of the key people who God has used in this era and this time to reintroduce the courts of heaven teaching to the body of Christ and uh, find it just one of the major revelations that God is giving to his ecclesia at this time. Robert, it's a joy to welcome you and thank you for uh, being with us today. It's, it's such an honor to be with you, Arlene. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And Robert, uh, just as we get into this uh, discussion, there are some who are watching who will know you, but also some who won't know the process that God has taken you through to prepare you for the high level of authority that uh, you're functioning in right now. Now, I know that this level of authority doesn't come cheap. And so, Robert, could you tell us a bit about just your background and the journey that you have been on and that God has taken you on to get you to the place that you are at now. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. You know, when I thought, when I stop and think about that, all I can do is marvel at the faithfulness of God because um, probably like many people watching or listening, uh, I would have thought God would have given up on me a long time ago, but, but what I discovered and what I continue to discover is that it's that his grace is always sufficient and that it doesn't matter how much we struggle, how much we seem to fall, fail, get back up. The bottom line is God's grace always is there that when we reach out to him, he reaches back. And of course the Bible says that if we draw near to him, he'll draw near to us. And I have discovered that through all of the fallings and the failings and the efforts and the, you know, all the stuff that all of us walk through when we're really honest, the truth of the matter is God uses all of that to fashion us and all of that to form us uh, and allow us to step into new dimensions of authority and power. Uh, you know, I often tell people uh, when Jesus said that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to a mountain, it'll be, it'll be plucked up, thrown into the sea. That's speaking of a real realm of authority. And I always tell people, I said, there's not a problem one that we have that more authority would not fix, that we, it would not cause to come to a solution. Uh, because so often we feel like we're fighting, we're trying to get to breakthrough, and yet that, that authority realm that we really functionally need to step into seems to elude us or, or evade us. Well, I've discovered that, that as we walk through even those places of struggle, maybe it's in small little increments we go up into new dimensions of authority and i you know just one more thing i would say about that is you know in 1980 the lord uh, i knew i had a call in my life way before that from is really as early as i can remember uh but in 1980 the lord really came and encountered me i was in my car going going to the store and he comes into my car unannounced and he says it's time for you to to do my work long story short i i i said no but then in a couple of weeks god just really dealt with me and i i surrendered well i knew when i was surrendering i was surrendering not not just to preach but i was actually surrendering to pray because i had this intuitive sense that god wanted to teach me how to pray so the first thing i did in 1980 was i began to go into realms of prayer and i didn't know the first thing about it but i have to say jesus is faithful that just like his disciples said lord teach me to pray that's what he's done with me. And I, I feel like that I've come to some places now where we actually have something to give uh, to the greater body of Christ. You know what I really find amazing in what you're saying, Robert, and so encouraging is that God started with bringing you into the place of prayer and bringing you into deeper levels of prayer because there really is nothing on the face of the planet that happens without prayer. Robert, before the Lord started to do that, would you have considered yourself a man of prayer? No, and I, the thing was, I didn't know anybody around me that prayed like I felt called to pray. 
uh, it's, it all really started with a call. I, I, I didn't even know about all the great men and women of God who we read about today, like Luther and Wesley and John Hyde and all of these that had these, these and Suzanne Wesley that had these tremendous prayer lives. I knew nothing about them. Um, and so, I mean, what I knew about prayer was let's bless our food when we eat. Maybe say a nice little prayer before we go to bed. Maybe say one when we get up in the morning, but, but no real in-depth prayer life. And so God really, really started teaching me that he wanted to lead me into a life of intercession. And if somebody was to say, what, what, what's your main call? I would say my main call is actually a life of intercession and everything else I do flows out of that. Any apostolic authority I carry, it flows out of that. Um, and, I, and I'm so appreciative for some of the things God kept me out of and other things he let me step into because both, both of those were actually very, very uh, uh, vital aspects. Wow, wow. Can you uh, give us a little bit of an idea, Robert, of some of those things that he kept you out of? Because that's really, really key what you're saying right now. Yeah, you know, you know, when the Lord started dealing with me, I look back and realize how jealous he has been over me. You know, God, God, the Bible talks about God being a jealous God. And it's like whenever he puts a call on someone's life, he's jealous for that call and he will guard it and protect it. And I look and, and, and the Lord led me and Mary, my wife, into realms of preparation with with certain people that I look back and realize they kept me out of all the political maneuvering in the church. You know, as I, as I began to step into a greater realm of, of influence, I became so aware of all the political stuff that's in the church and this one trying to pull this one down and this one trying to climb over that one and this one. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was allowed to grow up in God in a very sincere way, in a very sincere, passionate way that what all I wanted was him and his presence, because yeah. that was the people that God put me with. And then it, and, and they, the, and I look back and realize my pastor, actually my apostolic leader, he had been in all of that and he had purposefully separated himself from that. Well, I, because he, because he guarded me from that, I didn't even know that aspect of quote unquote Christianity uh, existed. And so I look back and realize God was so jealous to keep a purity just a real purity in the heart and, and not let me get caught up in any of that, uh, that would, that could have tainted me. It really, it really could have tainted me. And I believe might have, might've been used against what God actually wanted to do, uh, and is doing with my life. Wow. Robert, that's just awesome to hear. And, and so very, very, very important, uh, to keep away from the political spirit and how <laughs> God did that, uh, with you one last uh question about the journey that you've been on before we switch to the next topic robert often i say that when god calls some people to start something completely new completely different mm -hmm. and i really see that courts of heaven revelation is revolutionary it's revolutionarily different mm -hmm. that often he will take you away from those you know those who are familiar with, he'll almost isolate you like he did with Abraham. He called Abraham to leave everything he knew and to follow him, not telling him where he was going to go, but just to say, follow me. Mm -hmm. Has that been your experience too, or has that been different for you? No, I think that's very much my experience because I would have classified myself before the court of heaven message, which I've been teaching now for 10, over 10 years. I would have classified myself as very much a spiritual warrior and in some senses still do, but I began to shift very much toward that, that what we have to do in the spirit realm, we have to deal with the legal issues that is allowing the enemy to operate against us, against cultures, you know, different, different aspects. And so I began to realize, you know, the real battle, the real thing we have to win is in a judicial system or the court system of heaven and that if we can if we can see the legal claims of the enemy revoked and removed then we can go to the battlefield and win every time and that was that was a major major shift in my mindset i remember when i was i don't think you would mind me saying this but when i was re revealing this or talking to dr c peter wagner about this he looked at me and his, we were in his home and he said robert he said 
what you're telling me is that the real battle is in a courtroom, not on a battlefield. And I said, yes, sir. And he looked at me and he said, this is a game changer. He said, because I have taught for years, we were on a battlefield, but you're telling me that if we, but we, if we can get legal things in place, then we can go to the battlefield and we can win without that resistance that so often we're facing. And so, yeah, it was, it was a huge thing. And one more thing I would say about that. Um, I believe when God calls someone to carry a fresh or a new revelation that wants to be impregnated in the body of Christ, I believe that's determined from the counsel of the Lord. Isaiah he said, after he was cleansed, he said, he, he, he heard the Lord saying, who can go for us? Who can we send? So all of a sudden he's in the council of the Lord. And from the council, they chose Isaiah and the message he would carry. And I believe that God chooses out of his sovereignty, certain ones and says, okay, this one I want to carry. And so I think that's why the apostle Paul referred to the gospel as my gospel. I mean, I think it had been so committed to him, the revelation of justification by faith and all that had been so committed to him that he said, this has been given to me as a stewardship before God. And that's really the way I feel about the court of heaven teaching. I feel a, a divine stewardship that I will be judged in of how well I stewarded it and how faithful I was with it. Wow. Robert, thank you for uh, just, uh, just sharing that. There's a weight of holiness. I don't know if you're noticing, but it's just moved into the room. Mm -hmm. It really, really has just moved into the room. There's a weight of glory Amen. that that has come into the room. And uh, I'm almost gobsmacked. It, it's, it's really quite overwhelming. Robert, as we uh, just move then further in this conversation, obviously the spirit of the Lord is moving upon the earth right now in a really unique and different way. I know that uh, in this, at the beginning of this year, this decade actually, 2020, the Lord just spoke to me and he said, tell them Arlene, it is a decade in which nations are going to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. Whole nations are going to do that. And I remember just receiving that and just being almost overwhelmed, a kind of, knew a little bit what Daniel must have felt like when he had all of his visions and just felt tremendously weak. For weeks after that, I was just exhausted just with hearing those words and seeing that. But Robert, according to you, what is the most important thing that the Holy Spirit is trying to say to the church right now? I think that, that okay, we just came through our um, I'm going to say it this way, election fiasco in America. We just came through all of that. And of course, anybody that knows me knows how avid of a, uh, of a Trump supporter in the sense that I felt like he was God's ordained person for that place. Now, I know other people have different opinions, but, but just because of divine encounters I had through dreams, I had that distinct awareness. And, and of course, most prophets that I know of would have prophesied that as well. Well, people have been bashing um, the prophets horrendously, you know, just you missed it, you need to repent and all this. But this is my perspective. I say, I don't believe the prophets missed it. I said, I believe there has to be a house of prayer in each nation to pray into reality the prophetic intent of God. And what we have so often now in nations is we have maybe a lot of praying going on, but it's very disconnected, very disjointed. I believe that we have to have what the Bible calls, according to Isaiah 56, 7, a house of prayer that has the right on a cultural level to pray into reality the, the, the prophetic intent of God for that nation. Um, and so I think every nation must have this, this, this joining together. And I, I, I tell people, a house is that which is in covenant with God, but then also in covenant with each other. And I believe that God's going to have to help us understand what that looks like, because it's not everybody being in the same location, but it is somehow or another us being joined together in covenant realms that can that can allow God to recognize us as a house that can give us the right then to stand in the courts of heaven and be able to beseech the Lord and present cases in behalf of that culture. And so I think God in this day is wanting to uh, bring that together so we can 
can pray into reality the prophetic intent of the Lord. You know, what you're saying, Robert, is so tremendously important. Because if I look at, for example, the American election, but also what's happening in some other nations, I don't think there has been more prayer on the face of the planet right. than there has been in the last year and in the last few months. And so this whole idea of a house of prayer that prays into being the purposes of God and shifts culture, that is something that is new. I find at least it's something that it's new. It's not just, it, it's hosting the presence of God, but it's more. Can you expand on that a little bit more, please? Yes, Isaiah 56, 7. It says, even them I will bring to my holy mountain. Okay, holy mountain is a governmental dimension of the spirit. It's not a geographical location. So anytime we read about a mountain, we're reading about God saying, I'm going to let this people stand in a governmental place so that their activities there doesn't just shift things on a personal level. It shifts things on a cultural level. So he said, I'm going to bring them to my holy mountain. I'm going to make them joyful in my house of prayer. And then he says, for my house of prayer shall be, uh, uh, it says, um, for, and their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house of prayer shall be a house of prayer for or in behalf of all nations. And so what I see God doing is that he is saying, okay, we have to take an honest look because I completely agree with you that in America and across the nations of the earth, there's probably never been more prayer offered uh, than what we've seen happen. So we have to say, okay, did were we praying wrong? Were we praying out of sync with God's will? But I don't think any of that's really the issue. I think the issue is that we're still so yet divided. For instance, I was just told by someone that here in America that they were in a situation and about three of the really significant prayer networks, they were all they were all arguing over who was going to get to be the most uh, relevant one, the most dominating one. In other words, they were doing the very same thing that Jesus' disciples did, arguing over who was going to get to be the greatest. And there's still that element that's there. And I said, how, how dare we? How dare we? I'm talking about us. How dare we? Wanting to see something shift in our nation, being more concerned over who gets the credit for it than over the intent of God being done and the prophetic purposes of God being fulfilled. That is yet an issue among us, I believe. And so I believe God wants to build houses of prayer, but I think he really wants to bring networks of prayers, uh, uh, prayer groups together and say, come on, let's not just do our own individual thing so that, well, we'll we can claim the credit for it when it happens. No, it's not about that. It's about getting God's will done. And I believe we have to come to a place where we want that more than we want fame glory credit you know whatever else might go with it that we say god we are passionate for your will because this is what i understand when that is there it gives the enemy a legal right to resist our presentation in the courts of heaven and literally he says he says they have no right to stand here and present this because look at the spirit at the motive with which they're operating and i think he denies us the right to stand and even present le legitimate cases before the lord wow 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 that's a significant key to to transforming nations and yes. trans and families or our businesses or whatever sphere that whatever level those of uh, us who are watching and listening to this are operating at you know robert that i'm, I'm just going to stay on this for for just a, a moment longer why because today I, I released a prophetic word you know just about the fact that i am hearing the spirit of the lord saying it's time to return to the upper room and one of the reasons why is because if we don't, and if we don't allow him to adjust our perspective in the upper room, then we're going to find ourselves fighting for the wrong things. Amen. And I use that same text that you use, you know, it says Jesus, the spirit was grieved about uh, him going to the cross and who would betray him. And the disciples are arguing about who would be the greatest. And I'm not pointing fingers, but uh, Lord, help us as a Amen. church. As a prayer, Lord, just to get it right this time and to adjust our focus. Robert, if there was one thing that you could say to people who are growing in this realization and who are watching and who are thinking, you know, 
I, I feel something stirring in my heart, but I'm not there yet. And if you look back at maybe, um, yeah, a younger version of yourself when you were just getting started, what's the piece of advice that you would give yourself in a younger stage or those who are just getting started now? I, it, for, for me personally, as I look back, I would say, number one, make sure you're rightly connected and accountable. Um, because let the, let the character that God wants and needs in us be fashioned and be formed. That's one of the things that I was so blessed with. My wife and I were so blessed with. We were, we were connected to a ministry that was raising us up. And what they bred into us was this, never be a reproach to the gospel always live a blameless life. Now, that doesn't mean we've been perfect, obviously, by it mean, believe me, I know repentance and, and asking for the blood of Jesus to speak and all of that. But see, we want to see, here's the deal. We say, okay, well, this activity and that activity will let me operate in authority. And some of that's true. But this is what people have to understand. Real authority in the spirit realm in the courts comes from righteousness righteousness is what produces real authority and of course we are righteous by the blood of jesus and we've been given a gift of righteousness but also we are to walk out fulfilled righteousness and see the remember whenever in ezekiel 14 14 it says that job it says that daniel and it says that noah even if those three stood before me god said there they would not have enough righteousness to deliver this nation from the from the destruction that's coming that he also said even to deliver their own sons and daughters so what that says is that there is a need for righteousness in us that from that realm we can stand and plead cases in the courts of heaven and god will move in our behalf so i would say let the character of god be fashioned and formed in us in an ongoing level and ongoing basis Amen. Amen. Amen, Robert. Robert, would you just be willing to pray and pray out, pray that out over us or release an impartation or pray as the Lord leads you right now, please? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. Lord, Lord lives are changed in moments. And, Father, I thank you that even now as we stand in your presence, I am asking for all those that are watching, all those that are listening, I am asking you, Lord, that you would do the deep work within us that is necessary for us to be able to stand and to represent ourselves, our families, but even our own nations, even our own cultures, that we might stand to see your divine purposes done in the earth. Would you replace within us our own selfish motivations with a passion for your will to be done in the earth, Lord, like never before. We just want to receive that in all the interaction of heaven, Lord, that goes with that. We just want to receive that even into our lives and begin to step into these fuller places of authority and power in might. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for doing this right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Robert, for those who want to uh, have more exposure to your teaching and to your ministry, how can they find you online? At Robert Henderson, my name, dot org. That's the best way. It, they, you, they can go there. It'll take them every other place they need to go. So Robert Henderson dot org. Okay. Robert, thank you for uh, just uh, spending time with us today. It's been a joy and very significant to interview you. Thank and uh, so thank you. And for those of you who are watching, we want to thank you for taking the time to uh, just uh, be with us today and to watch. And we bless you. Robert, bless you too. And bye-bye. Bye-bye.